my day off from the gym today, so I might as well have a drink while I record this one, but we've not done the joke of opening the beer with something random, so pass me a random object. Really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Ah, bollocks. Well, it's fine. Thank you. The giant tortoise is a fairly unremarkable creature, if you discount the fact that they can live for up to 10 decades and the sound of them fucking is the noise they use for the velociraptors in Jurassic Park. No, really. Look it up. Here's a clip. They're also apparently so delicious that they cause another animal to go extinct. So please tell me, how delicious is this giant tortoise? It's apparently so delicious that one of the few things we know about the creature, like, you know, at least from the earliest like, you know, encounters man had with it, is that it tasted really nice. And there are various accounts from sailors who encountered and then ate the giant tortoise that the meat of this animal is tastier than chicken, beef or pork. Now, in addition, the fat of the giant tortoise, when you use it to cook or just smeared it on bread, was said to be tastier than even the purest butter. Oh, just the thought of spraying fat. <laughs> Did you not have bread and dripping as a kid then? Oh no, I, I hate like, if I have um, a dish with like, you know, pork or whatever, I'll take all the fat off, I, I can't stand it. See, I don't like fat on any of my meat now as an adult because yeah. when my grandma would give us bread and dripping sandwiches. Oh, just, oh. And if people don't know what, what Carl, what's dripping? Dripping is exactly what it sounds like. It's the fat that drips off meat when it's cooking that you store in a jar and then spread on bread. I'm, ugh. Yeah, that's what, and I imagine, and I don't like fucking fat anymore. So do you know when you cook bacon yeah. and you leave the pan outside and it gets all that white no. smear on it? Ugh. What you do now is you get a slice of bread and go, no, ugh. no, that's disgusting. <laughs> Lucas <laughs> is just in corner like, oh God, oh. Don't fucking eat bread and dripping sandwiches, man. Like, that is the worst thing I've ever had. So I've eaten those century egg things. Do you know those eggs that are basically boiled in piss or whatever and they go jet black? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they taste better than bread and dripping. I've had chicken feet. Chicken feet taste better than fucking bread and dripping. I'm going to try a haggis for the first time later today. So, uh... You want to get some neeps and tatties with that as well? Yeah. Actually, I think neeps are tatties. I forget. <laughs> well, it says it's haggis, neeps and tatties. There it is, yeah, because my family's part Scottish, so I, I kind of remember that a bit. And I always remember the story my dad told me when like, he first started dating my mum. And he went round to meet her mum, like, you know, the one who's Scottish. And he said he walked in and there was just like a, a pig's head on the side, just staring at him. He's like, <laughs> are you staying for tea, Stuart? No, <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> anyway, more about this tortoise. Okay, it does sound quite tasty. I'm also guessing it's quite easy to catch. Yeah, because it's a fucking tortoise. And according to like those same reports from sailors who first encountered this creature, it was almost insultingly easy to catch. With most like you know reports saying that you'd walk up to whatever specimen looked tastiest and you'd just roll it over. And there's nothing it could do. You'd roll it over and then proceed to roll it over again and again until you got to your boat and then just put it on the boat. And, there's no and obviously, it's not going to escape. <laughs> no. How the fuck is that going to escape? It reminds me of uh, my mate's got a three-legged dog and he opened the door once as I was leaving and the dog tried to run off. And he went, are you not going to go catch him? He went, look how slow he's going. He's like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> and he, we gave him like a full 30-second head start. My mate walked up and just picked him up and brought him back in the house. And that's with the big ones, but the smaller ones were apparently even easier to catch because what you would do instead of rolling them is pick them up and just put them on your back and just lash them to your back and wear them like a backpack full of impotent tortoise rage. In addition to all this, like, they were so plentiful around the time that, like, you know, sailors first encountered them that there were parts that you would see just colonies. I'm not sure what the word is for a group of tortoises. Let's actually look that up right now. I'm curious. Lucas, do you want to just quickly on your phone look up what is the word for a group of tortoises while I just, I guess, vamp for a second? Because what's your favourite word for a group of animals? While we wait for that, I think I like gorillas. Do you know what it is? It's a government of gorillas. Government. And it just sounds so so cool. What's the group of tortoises? It's called a creep. It's called a creep. Oh, that's so good. Do you want to bring up a list now and go through it? That's yeah. actually a really good idea. We'll talk more about tortoises in a sec, but I want to do this. Yeah. Research is my passion. So I say. Just list of animal groups. Like the names that they use for animal groups. And Lucas will be back later in the video when he's found some funny ones. So you know what? Just interject when you find a funny one. Well, apes are a shrewdness. A shrewdness? I thought it was a government of gorillas. No, apes. Apes. Apes, oh, apes specifically, okay. Just jump in whenever you find a funny one, Lucas, and we'll continue talking about this delicious, delicious ass tortoise. Something well, like there's a destruction of wild cats. Destruction, <laughs> I like that. Well, as a cat owner, Nisha, do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can <laughs> see that. <laughs> yeah, just all sat on a table just knocking stuff off. A destruction of wild cats, or awesome. A quiver of cobras. Oh, that's cool. 
So talking about the delicious tortoise once the, again. Yeah, it, give it its official title, yes. The Very Delicious Tortoise. That's the official name for it. Yeah. I'm now imagining it's a different version of like the Very Hungry Caterpillar. The Very the very Delicious Tortoise. <laughs> and every page is a new part of a tortoise that you can eat. Anyway, continue. What's, what's the question? <laughs> I'm assuming there was more to it than just you know, catching the tortoise for just food. I'm sure they had more... You know, advantages. Yeah, because you think like, well, one, they are very delicious. So it makes sense, like, just for the sake of like morale for the crew, we've got this very, very tasty animal on board you can all eat. But there was another advantage to like, you know, exclusively just stocking up the hold of a ship with tortoises, and that is that tortoises are very long lived and can survive upwards of a year without food. Mm. So you could get a tortoise and put it in the hold, and it would stay there for a year without any sort of maintenance, it just stay in its shell, hiding, and then you could butcher it at your leisure. And as if that wasn't like, you know, a big enough advantage of like, capturing tortoises, they also have a special bladder inside their body that stores fresh water, which okay. will stay fresh for as long as the tortoise is alive. So in addition to getting all the delicious tortoise meat and all like the super nice fat you could use in all your cooking and stuff like that, you would also get five litres of pure fresh water, which is obviously very hard to come by on a ship. So it doubled not only as a food source, but as a water source. Wow. Like they were the perfect food for sailors. Have a full meal with that then. It basically was, day. yeah. And for not, a year. For a year, and you can just, and they were so easy to catch, and they were so plentiful, you could just fill your entire hold with them. Just have like a room full of like tortoises, tortoises just yeah. turned upside down. Like. <laughs> so sad. It's, it's really depressing to think about, but like for sailors back then, these, were, these things were a godsend and they were so useful to have in the hold. And mm. this is where we get to like, you know, the, the meat of today's article, as it were, and the, the thing people probably want to think about. How did they make another animal go extinct? Well, the tortoises were so delicious and the fat was just so nice when used in cooking that it made normally unpalatable meat palatable. And the most famous example of this is the dodo. And I think we all know about the dodo and the story goes, it went extinct because it was very easy to catch because they'd never encountered humans before. Dodo meat was actually very, very unpalatable. It's very, like, very tough, didn't taste very nice. And they actually died because like, just destruction of their habitat. But there was one exception to this, and that was if you smothered the dodo meat in tortoise fat, at which point it tasted fine. And that's what sailors would do. And, they re and if you had a tortoise in your hold, you would go capture a bunch of dodos because they're just as easy to catch and you can make the meat taste nice with the tortoise fat. The tortoise was literally so delicious, it helped make another animal go extinct because not the, the dodo might very well have been okay and survived if not for the fact that it was common knowledge amongst sailors that they taste fine if you smother it in tortoise fat. And that makes me think that like more animals would have gone extinct if Heinz like, tomato ketchup was invented sooner. Imagine yeah. how many more things would have been caught and eaten if sailors just had entire barrels full of like, you know, hendo sauce or something yeah. in their hole. Yeah, that's a bit like me with um, cheese. Like if I pour a cheese, cheese on anything, also, yeah. I will eat it. Like oh. cauliflower, I hate cauliflower. Cauliflower cheese. Perfect. Amazing. Leeks, leeks out that great. Leeks and cheese, broccoli and cheese, everything and cheese tastes amazing. Although I draw the line at what my mate eats, which is curry and cheese. Oh, oh no, no. no. All right, so we're at the end of the video now, Lucas, and I believe you've just been quietly in the background finding out names for groups of animals, and I'm so, very yeah. excited. I've got a few little picks. We'll start off with a tame one. Okay. I thought it was quite a cool one. Go for it. We've got a business of ferrets. Oh, yeah, I like that. Business of ferrets. Yeah. ferrets. Yes. What business have ferrets got to do? A shadow of jaguars. That, oh, that's fucking, that's terrifying. A shadow of jaguars. That's... So we have a conspiracy of lemurs. That's really, I like that. A parliament of owls. I can see that. They're always questioning out the who, who, who. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Cat. A pandemonium of parrots. Oh, I was hoping you were going to say panda. A pandemonium of panda. Oh! <laughs> a pandemonium of, I love this because whoever comes up with these is a fucking don because they're always amazing. And I, I always forget like a couple and then remember a few. Then the next time I go through like the list like Luke's doing, I go, I forgot pandemonium of parrots. A prickle of porcupines. That's cool. That's, that's, that's cool. a really good one. A little prickle, a little prickle. Uh, I think this might be the last one I've got. Okay. And it's an unkindness of ravens. <laughs> So crows is a murder of crows, like the famous one. An unkindness yeah. of ravens. Oh, that's so strong. It's just like the knockoff version, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's like the sense of right alliance, whatever it is, isn't it? That's like the Poundland version of that. 
<laughs> That's the, like the murder of crows that you buy on Wish. Yeah. Tesco's own. <laughs> Tesco's own murder of crows and unkindness of ravens. It's exactly the same. It's like when you get a knockoff toys, like instead of like Captain America, you get like American Man. <laughs> Cap Captain Man. Captain Britain. 